A blast from the past. We talk about one of life's inevitabilities. And the weekly numbers on the Unnamed Real Estate Podcast. Well, howdy there, friends and neighbors. Doing a little pause here to let the music die out. I'm getting better at this. So, welcome to the Unnamed Real Estate Podcast. My name is Ray Dawson. I am an associate broker here at ProStar Realty. These great office you're seeing in the background. And a couple things going on. If those of you guys who are looking around the side of the screen, you're looking at uh, my, my Facebook page, at least an element of it. And because Facebook decided to remind me of something. And this is came across my memories from one year ago. And as you can see here, one year ago on June 17th, 2020, I proclaimed for my real estate peeps, time to bl brush up on your listing presentations. And then I gave the details, all active only, no other variables. This day last year, we had 9,880 and we were dropping like a rock as more buyers came on the market because of interest rates, less houses got put on the market because of various issues, and the, the free fall started. So just uh, goes to prove you, I have always been a prophet. So anyways, I'm going to try to keep it on this screen, do this all in one take. Um, so that's the blast from the past. Uh, today's episode, we're going to be covering something called the inevitability of taxes. Because you can't get away from it. And we are actually coming up on a tax year milestone here in a couple weeks that some of you may be aware of, may not be aware of. And coincidentally enough, a um, newspaper that I read called the uh, Daily Independent um, that I read online right here. These guys actually came up with an article dated today. Now, I came across the Daily Independent and read it mostly online just about a month or so ago. And I love this thing because it reads like an old school newspaper. And I can sit here. I can click through, I can read about denture problems. It's like a little, another blast from the past. This is the way you used to do it over your coffee and scrambled eggs in the morning. And I, I, I like the format better. I, I don't know what it is. I'm, I might be a um, boomer trapped in a millennial's body or something going on because I like the old school newspapers. And all the way in the back, it's got the important stuff you really need, like what's coming on you know, what's going to be on the paper or uh, on the television? You guys remember television? It's that big thing sitting over in the corner of your uh, living room. Nobody looks at it unless you're playing a video or something. Um, it's got crossword puzzles. It's got how to win at bridge. You know, advice from a stranger you never met. That makes it completely legitimate. All right. It's something about Jared Kushner, um, crossword puzzles, and of course, your old school comic strips. Now, I'm going to blink through this thing really, really quick because uh, I. You know, you never know when you're going to suddenly get hit by uh, the guy from Scott Adams from Dilbert coming after you for, you know, copyright violation. But for those of you guys who are interested here, you know, they even have your astrology. So the reason why I'm bringing this in is because on the front page, as I opened it up this morning on my computer, I found this article. Now, just for the record, I was already planning on doing taxes this week and to discuss it, but Article right here by Brent Nuff Ruffner of Independent News Media talking about the Valley home values are on the rise and that means your taxes are going up. Now, it turns out that we're actually limited here in Arizona uh, on how high your taxes can go. Uh, there was a proposition that was passed, a 117, uh, passed in 2020, means that your uh, maximum value of your house um, can only go up by 5% year to year. This is a benefit for you guys because it means that for the 18 to 20 percent appreciation we're getting this year, you're not going to get a property tax bill of 18 to 20 percent more coming up on the next year. Although it is going to go up, and we got to start tracking that. Um, that being said, I also have to point out that this is one of the things that California did a couple years ago uh, before we did, and it really, really wound up screwing them up. Because they have a limitation about how high their property taxes can go. Um, people who stay in properties tend to have their property 
tax rates go up much, much slower than the value of their property, which means the local uh, municipalities and whatnot aren't getting the tax revenue that they would normally get on something like that. So, you know, I'll leave this for the politicians to hack out and uh, the talking heads on television and newspapers to argue over. But that's just something, you know, you might want to be aware of. Taxes are going to be going up and they're not going to be going up uh, that much, but they are going up. Now, to follow along this trend and whatnot, and since I already got this one made, let's take a look at this uh, screen that I got going right here. And we're going to start the infamous PowerPoint slideshow. Or not. Okay, here we go. Let me pull this whole thing in this frame and get my smiling face out of the way. So if you're a property owner, you get this thing in the mail. This is your property notice of valuation. They come up about once a year, uh, usually right at the beginning of the year, and just let you know how much your valuation, and which is what the assessor says your property is worth, is going to go up. Um, on this particular one, this one's mine. You can see that uh, my 2021 valuations, which is right here, all right, and this is what they're planning on going up to next year. They try to tell you about a year in advance, which is really cool, so you can prep for it. Um, for the year of 2021, you're saying that the full cash value, and we're going to have a conversation about that because that's a number that I've mentioned before, is $188,200. I love that number. Why do I love that number? Because according to the appraiser who did my refi he, uh, back in March, they said that my property is worth 298 or 295. Um, so they're calculating for the from the assessor sites less value for my property than the market thinks it is. Now, even though down here in their definitions you'll see that the full cash value reflects market unless other statutory calculations are mandated and is the applicable appealable value. Um, this is the number that they're going to assign to your property to state. This is where we're going to base the taxes off of that. After that, they do some modification and they come up with something called limited property value. That's the next line down. This is what they actually really use for figuring out your taxes. Now, there's an assessment ratio, and that's what they assess your value at, and then they come up with the assessed value. So according to this, is a grand total of $8,219. And that's the number that then they apply the next level to. Now, that's not going to be your your total tax bill, whatever that adjusted number is. What it really, uh, because on top of that, you might be in a special tax assessment site. Your particular school district might have voted to raise your taxes to send more money to the schools. But this is a, a document that you're going to be seeing. This is how they all, all uh, calculate it out. Now, <clears throat> two more things while I'm on this page. All right, first one's first. Uh, a couple weeks ago, a couple months ago, uh, I went on a little mini rant about wholesalers. And I was exp explaining in great detail how about bad actors will use this full cash value on here as a document to put in front of homeowners and convince them that their house, which the appraiser says on the market would get go for two ninety five, is actually only worth two eighty eight, and they're doing you a favor by paying full cash value on your house, even though the condition of it sucks. So never, ever, ever, just because of the government calls this your full cash value, it's not the market value of your house and you sell your house at market rates not the full cash value this is just a bureaucratic terminology that they really really should change and if any of you guys know a congressman or legislator out there that you could call up and say we need to get this thing changed to something else like taxable cash value that's a great term tcv that is not something that anybody will ever confuse with the actual marketable value or worse the zillow estimate of their property all right. So remember that one on this page. The other one um, I wanted to point out on these things is that you have oh, back, back, back. You have a couple options here. You can actually get these things not mailed to you. All right. You can you can sign up for the e notices online. You'll need that little authorization code. All right. And you could start getting stuff sent directly to your email. One of the other things, and I should have come up with a separate slide of this. That I really want to call out is if you are retired all right if you are over the age of i believe it's 65 you can apply with your county for to have your property taxes locked which means instead of your property taxes going up every year every year, every year and you're on a fixed income 
it will actually lock in your property rate for a certain time period. So you don't have to worry about adjustments. I do know that you have to be of a certain age. And the other thing is you have to live in your property for more than two years. I, 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 I put a gentleman into a house a year and a half ago. I have a little tickler in my outlook, right? So when it's time to tell him to apply for that. When you apply for it, it has to be done before the September of the next um, t um, tax period. All right, and you, you just go through the process. But if you know anybody who has retired, they're on the fixed income, make and they've lived in the property for over two years, make sure that they've applied for that. And if they have any questions, they can get a hold of me, contact information below. So one of the other things going on when we come to taxes is it does not come to you as one big bill at the end of the year. All right, it's actually split up into two separate time periods. And the bill does not happen immediately after you get um the time period is over, right? The first half of your taxes that you're going to see on these things come in. And for the first six months, all right, the taxes become due on October 1st of the current year. We are coming up right now when I'm doing this. This is June the 17th when I'm running, uh, recording this. At the end of this month, June 30th, the first half of the taxes are in the can, all right? That's the first half. The bill does not actually get presented until October 1st. And nine times out of 10, what happens is that your mortgage company is going to get that. For you fortunate few, you lucky people out there who actually have paid off your house, that bill will be coming to whatever your tax address is, is written down on there. So, but it's not going to be due until October 1st. And the second half comes in March the 1st of the following year. Now, this is where people start getting confused. This is why I came up with this calendar that I stole from www.yourmomhatesthis.com. I just did a quick image search. I've never been to that website. Do not go there. I have no idea what you're going to see. It's the internet, people. There's scary stuff out there. But for in this example, for this year, 2021, all right, for the first half, all right, January to June, the tax bill comes due in October. Right. That's when the bill gets sent to your mortgage company or gets sent to your house. And you have one month to pay for it, all right, because it is considered, you know, in arrears by November 1st. That's when you start running into penalties and whatnot. So you have that period from October 1st to November to pay off all the taxes. And I keep pointing at the screens like you can see my finger. All the taxes are built up during here. And it's for ha half your annual taxes. So when, when you're looking at the MLS, uh, sheet if you know your taxes you're paying a thousand dollars a year on taxes all right F a five hundred dollar bill is going to come to your door october 1st payable by november 1st makes sense second half all right which is going to be july through december actually comes due march 1st of the following year 2022 not 2021 all right there's no timey-wimey stuff going on in here and like that other bill previous, it's due, all right? But in this one, instead of going just a month over, it actually goes to May 1st. And the reason for that is that the state legislator decided they did not want to slap people with two tax days going in October, one for your payroll taxes and everything, and the other one for in your income taxes and one for your uh, property taxes. So they actually deferred that back another month to give you extra time to get to it. I hope this all cleared it up. Another thing that I wanted to point out on this thing, which um, um, comes up a lot when it comes to closing days. And we're going to go back to this slide right here. All right. You, you have these time periods that go on here where for some reason, okay, let's use this example. If you close your house, your house is up for sale and you close your house on, let's say, June 3rd. All right. Your tax is payable from January 1st to June 3rd. New buyer comes in, they're taking over July. Or is it the other way? Around? I can't remember that one. I should have researched that one because it does go one way or the other. But regardless, this bill that we see here, all right, coming in this time period is not going to get mailed out to somebody till October 1st. Well, what's going on in October 1st? The original home seller is gone. All right. He's off living his best life somewhere else. But the home buyer has the bill suddenly come due. This is where escrow comes in and escrow works its funky number magic. 
because what they're going to do in the in the case of this is they know they're going to be able to calculate out that you still have to pay the taxes for this time period right now even though you're leaving state so they're going to take the money out of your account before or out of your side of the ledger before they send you the check all right and give it as a credit over to the buyer so buyer effectively gets the money to pay have the money in the bank ready to go when that tax bill comes through and the mortgage companies all right because they're collect they collect the, the taxes up front and since that tax bill is probably not going to go to mr buyer it's going to go to mr buyer's bank all right the mortgage company is going to make sure that that money that the seller is paying for for everything over here comes to them and then when the tax bill comes through the money will be there taxes still get paid all right this is the way this is the way the system works this worked out the only time this thing gets really really confusing and just you know this is a really easy example is because if for some reason you weren't actually closing at the end of the time period and more likely it would be like closing March 15th what they're going to do is they're going to calculate something called out you know they're going to prorate that tax burden here through March 15th and they're going to count you're going to take all the taxes divided by the number of the days in the year multiply by how many days that the seller had it in there and that's what they're going to charge the seller so I hope this makes sense to you it's one of those things it comes up it's one of those little numbers that get adjusted in escrow during escrow um, probably have to have this conversation at closing about two out of three times just to explain you know, explain it to the buyers when they're coming into it or explain it to the seller when they're looking at their their settlement statement why is this chunk of money coming out for taxes um, and this is just one of those little myriad little things coming up that um, basically happens in, in the background all right until you're signing your settlement statement going okay I know this is going out so and I hope that was useful and I cleared everything out so did we hit all the highlights today yeah got to show you the Facebook page thing we got to discuss taxes um, remember out there that we we're talking about if you do have um, you know if you are of age retirement thing I'm going to put a link in the show notes below so you can look into that see if that will actually work for you and if you have any other questions you can uh, write or send stuff below and now we're going to go over to uh, running the numbers because we got some interesting ones this week now the numbers for June 16th 2021 our actives this week are 5111 which is up 179 from the prior week our pendings are at 1877 which is down 137 from the week before our under contracts looking for backups are at 1234 which is up 27 and a nice round number our offers were out there with a buyer's contingency are at 68 which is down 20 from the week before our closings are at 2358 which is up 46 from the week before and we'll continue to see that number climb as we get towards the end of the month and our coming soon for next week are 998 and thank you for watching and following you through till the end I'll put the uh, in the show notes to know you'll have a link to the daily independent uh, news article discussing the uh, taxes going up I'll also keep the um, have another link in there for uh, senior citizens who might qualify for the uh, tax program to freeze your uh, property taxes next week I'm not sure what's going to happen between now and then because something is always new happening in real estate so you guys have a great day